All right, I have breaking news for all Ethereum holders. The Ethereum hard fork Constantinople has been officially delayed. This hard fork. This was an upgrade slash optimization of the Ethereum network. And as such, this was something that has been highly anticipated by the community. And it was supposed to happen today. Well, a few hours ago, late last night, just a few hours before the scheduled hard fork was supposed to happen, the Ethereum core developers, they put the community on notice. Today I wanna to talk about what happened, why it happened, and what this means for you as an Ethereum hodler, what this means for you in the short term, as well as what this means for Ethereum in the long term. Today, all this and more here at Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for a video on cryptocurrency every day. My name's Austin, and we will always, we will always keep you up to date on what's going on in the crypto market, so make sure you subscribe. Like always, let's jump in. In a statement, the Ethereum core developers and Ethereum security community said that they have decided to postpone the hard fork after security researchers identified a potential vulnerability in one of the software updates, one of the software upgrades. Yikes. Well, what is this potential vulnerability? In this direct quote, security researchers like Chain Security and Trail of Bits ran, and they're still running, analysis across the entire blockchain. So right now, the entire Ethereum blockchain is getting a little bit of a checkup. And to be clear, they did not they did not find any cases of this vulnerability in the wild. However, there's still a non-zero risk that some contracts could be affected. So, so while they didn't actually find a vulnerability, right now there's a non-zero risk, meaning probably a minuscule risk, that there could be a potential vulnerability. But they caught it, so no need to worry. Ideally, they would have caught it three weeks ago rather than three hours ago, but still. The decision was reached to postpone the fork out of an abundance of caution, mainly because they didn't have enough time to make sure the fork was good to go um, because they found it so late or just in time, depending on how you look at life. But what does this mean for you as, a, as an Ethereum holder? Well, what could have this potential vulnerability have been? Ethereum could have been vulnerable to a re-entry attack. Do you remember what a re-entry attack is? Well, this was actually heavily talked about back in the probably the most contentious hard fork in cryptocurrency, not Bitcoin Cash. I'm talking about years earlier when Ethereum hard forked off of Ethereum Classic, which caused a huge civil war in crypto. And back then the issue was re-entry attacks, which, and while it didn't happen, and luckily it's not gonna happen to Ethereum yet, cross your fingers because they found it, Reentry attacks allow a malicious user to drain Ethereum from a payment channel. Good thing they caught it. What does this mean for you? Well, if you're Ethereum hold, if you hold Ethereum, so for most Ethereum users, not including people who, who run a node, if you run a node, just read this article, link in the description below. But for most users of Ethereum or hold, hodlers, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to take any action. Your wallet remains secure because really it's as if nothing happened. They didn't go through with it. Um, and uh, the biggest, and I agree with this article, the biggest um, thing that could happen is it's likely that scammers will seek to take advantage of the situation to swindle crypto hodlers out of their funds. We'll see, just be careful out there. And right now there's been no new fork date announced, but we'll keep you updated. And I wanna take this so, I mean, let's see what this did to the price first. If we, if we, if we update coin market cap, we see that the whole market's down, Bitcoin's down almost 2%. Right now, Ethereum is not that much more affected. They're down 5% as opposed to two or one, like a lot of the other cryptocurrencies. And honestly, nor should they be down because nothing really happened. You know, developers find bugs all the time and they fix them, which is what you want developers to do. But also, the probably a lot of markets around the world are just waking, haven't woken up to this news yet. So, so we'll see. But I want to take this opportunity and just issue a little warning to all Ethereum hodlers. 
And this is not financial advice because I'm just a crypto enthusiast. I'm just a guy that watches the market every single day. And a lot of times you ask me, what altcoins do I think will see, for lack of a better word, I don't want to sound cliche, but massive gains or, or do very well when the market turns bullish again. And I want to take this opportunity and prove to you that I think, I don't know about five years or 10 years, but in the next two to three years, I think Ethereum will do very, very well once the market turns bullish again. I have three reasons. We're going to talk about three reasons. We'll get to them, but uh, stick around to the very end. And I want to talk about probably even bigger news. NASA is looking into cryptocurrency. This actually should have probably been the thumbnail of the video. I wasn't sure, but that's big news and Tron. So stick around for some of that daily news. But let's talk about ETH. So like I said, I'm not a financial advisor, but one thing that I always like to do is look at volume. Because to me, volume is one of the big things that indicates success of a cryptocurrency. And if we just see who has the most 24 hour trading volume, obviously Bitcoin, that's good. Tether, that's sad, I get it, but the Tether is number two, it's interesting. But Ethereum has the most 24 hour volume on it. And it's not just today because of the hard fork news or whatever, but Ethereum for the last year. You can go check out these stats historically. For the last year, Ethereum's always been in the top five. EOS as well. EOS is doing very well. I may make a video on EOS pretty soon, but uh, Ethereum is doing the third most volume in the last 24 hours. Consistence, consistently. So why is volume so important? Well, trading volume reflects the overall activity of the market, indicating the sheer amount of buying and selling of cryptos. Next to price, this is one of the most closely watched indicators. And why is that? Well, trading volume indicates one, market liquidity, and two, supply and demand for your security or your cryptocurrency. So it indicates liquidity, which you always look for as an investor. Uh, you gotta be able to sell if you hold something. And demand, what's the demand for this crypto? Because Honestly, when you see a cryptocurrency with a high market cap, maybe high on the list, if it doesn't have a high volume, what does that tell you? It just tells you that a bunch of whales are just hodling and there's not really anybody trading this asset. Well, Ethereum has consistently had some of the most trading volume despite, and this is the other way, despite how people say it's an outdated technology. Despite now we have, this is a generation two, now we have generation three cryptocurrencies like EOS and Cardano and Tron trying to make Ethereum irrelevant, yet Ethereum still maintains pretty positive uh, trading volume. Trading volume also reflects pricing momentum. When stock market activity, i.e. volume, is low, investors anticipate slower moving or declining prices. When market activity goes up, pricing typically moves in the same direction. So with crypto, it's a little different because this is, such, this is so new everything just follows Bitcoin. So you can't, you take it with a grain of salt and just take this as just a little whisper. I just like to follow these little trends and see where they take me. And Ethereum, once the market does turn bullish again, I think that vol uh, volume is one of the key indicators that it could do very well. It's not the only one, it's just one. That's a green flag for me with Ethereum. Let's go to number two. Ethereum blockchain developers developer activity remains the highest ranked out of any cryptocurrency project. And this is true. Ethereum still has the most developers on the platform. You can go to stateofdapps.com, check out every single dApp on their exchange application. There's Maker, DAO, Finance, Basic Attention Token, Wallet, Decentraland, Arger. There's a bunch of betting um, and just games out there. But the point is, this is number two out of three. Ethereum has the most developers. Now, the argument is that developers are gonna to want to go to EOS or Tron or Cardano because it's gonna be easier to develop. This is a more scalable, or it's a faster platform to do it on. But right now, Ethereum still has the most. That says something, because dApps add value to your cryptocurrency. Which brings me to number three, first mover advantage. The reason Ethereum has so many developers because it was there first. Uh, it has pretty much total market saturation. And while they may be starting to lose some, that's hard to do. Harder than gaining them all in the first place. But how important is first mover advantage? Let's use some historical examples. 
Coca-Cola. You've heard of it. Well, originally there was a Verner's and Dr. Pepper who actually deb debuted earlier than Coca-Cola. There's Dr. Pepper. But first mover advantage doesn't necessarily mean that the first company to launch has the advantage. Rather, it refers to the first company to capture a large market share. So Ethereum, much like Coca-Cola, they were the first ones to capture the huge market share. And this was bad for competitors in the future because when Coca-Cola debuted in 1886, they immediately became a consumer favorite. They got that saturation. And by the time Pepsi launched, think of Pepsi as EOS or Cardano. By the time Pepsi launched over 10 years later, Coke was already selling a million gallons per year. Well, in the last 30, 50 years, however long it's been, Pepsi has gone bankrupt twice. They've rebranded in 1950, and they also merged with Frito-Lay, and all just to keep their, their life, their livelihood against Coca-Cola. What's better, Pepsi or Coca-Cola? You tell me, but because of that first mover advantage, it took Pepsi a long time to come close to Coca-Cola. Example, example number two out of three, Kellogg's. You've heard of it. And the major competitors for Kellogg's is Post and Quaker Oats. While Post and Quaker Oats created similar cereals later, none of them could catch up to the brand affinity and popularity of Kellogg. Obviously, these two are major competitors, but Kellogg's the mecca because they got there first. And maybe these examples are unfair. You might be shouting at your computer right now saying, these are products, it's not technology. Technology is different. And we will talk about technology in a second, but just the last example is a little more present day, Uber. Uber started in 2009, beating out Sidecar for eventual, eventual market domination. And in 2012, so 9, 10, 11, 12, three years later, Lyft became Uber's most ferocious competitor. But you know what? Despite how the people say like, oh, Lyft treats their drivers better, and it's better for the consumer. Uber's still number one. That's the first one I go to. I think because they're cheaper too, but they have that first mover advantage. Ethereum has that. So I'm not saying Ethereum will be here in 10 years, but I'm saying in the next two to three years, because of these signs that we're seeing, I think Ethereum will do very well. And let's get more specific because these weren't technology. If a technology gets outdated, then they will become irrelevant and fast. Well, let's check this out because most people compare cryptocurrency to the internet days and Ethereum is often compared to Netscape. Why? Because it was the OG. It was the original, but it got shown up by Yahoo and Google and AOL and all these things that were faster, better that came later. Well, Network launched somewhere in 1994. And again, it got outdated. And I'm just gonna be honest with you. As much as I tried to find information to say that, you know, Netscape uh, uh, rallied, continued to rally well into the uh, the bubble, the dot com bubble happened at around 2000. And if you look at Netscape, the best Netscape ever did was in 95, 96, a couple years after it was launched. And when the bubble happened, as a lot of other um, applications on the internet, like Internet Explorer, they were moving up and up and up towards that internet bubble. Uh, Netscape moved down. But with this last point, what I wanna, wanna illustrate is um, even when Netscape, an outdated technology, by 2001, way more people were using, um, were using Yahoo. And Google was created in 1998. But Netscape, despite it being the inferior, uh, lasted for over two years after the internet bubble. It didn't do well, but it still maintained. So whether Ethereum stays at number three, maybe it gets surpassed by EOS or Litecoin or Tron or, oh, wow, I didn't forget this 24 hour volume, um, or whatever, whether it drops down to number 10 or whatever, I still think Ethereum is going to, when the market turns bullish, because of the developers on there, I can see it doing well, or it could horribly fail. But the point is, I'm not selling any of my Ethereum. And the last thing I just want to point out, that Bact has hinted that it's going to open up uh, Ethereum futures, altcoins, and the CBOE later changed their mind and, 
and canceled this, but they were supposed to launch Ethereum futures at the end of last year. And while, you know, I think all of us agree futures are not good for cryptocurrency, they lead to price manipulation. What futures will do is it will have all the investors in Wales basically making sure that Ethereum survives so they can manipulate the price. That's how they make money. So if we get Ethereum futures, to me, that would indicate that at least for the next two or three years, Ethereum will do well. What do you think? That was my spiel. Uh, let me know. And please feel free to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like only if you've gotten some value thus far. Let me know what you think. Let me get to the last, new t last two news stories. NASA eyes blockchain and crypto tokens to secure critical air traffic information. This is pretty cool. According to the report, the prototype for NASA uses blockchain to minimize potential security risks from new aircraft surveillance technology mandated by the Federal Aviation Administration by 2020. So they're looking into using cryptocurrency, not just blockchain, but also specifically cryptocurrency to secure their data. Because right now they have open avenues for data interception because data is publicly broadcast or publicly broadcasts sensitive flight information such as position and identity to the aircraft. If they put that on the blockchain, according to them, not even according to me, I will make it more secure. And blockchain power, the blockchain use cases for the blockchain powered solution would apply to military, corporate and aircraft operators who require privacy. And this isn't going to be implemented, it looks like, by 2020. Obviously, it could always get delayed, but they are specifically looking into cryptocurrency uh, for, where is this? Here it is. The system could include, could include an identifying cryptographic token, cryptocurrency, that could be embedded in the transmission and could be used to authenticate the transmission. That's pretty cool. That would be a huge green flag, but we'll keep you posted. And the last thing is Tron ABCC Exchange. Have you heard of it? Partners with Tron to so become the first platform to list TRC-10 tokens. So you've heard of ERC-20 tokens, Ethereum tokens. A lot of those were just added to Coinbase. Well, now the ABCC Exchange is adding TRC-10 tokens, which is a technical standard for tokens that are supported by the cryptocurrency's native blockchain without the deployment of the Tron virtual machine. So Tron tokens uh, now are gonna be, be exchange partners, um, are now gonna be listed for the first time on this exchange. Good news for Tron, what's it mean in the long run? Not much, but if Tron keeps seeing success like this, it's definitely gonna add value and liquidity and volume to their token, Tron and whatever uh, crypto's on top of it. All right, team, that's the video for today. I appreciate you. I'll be talking to you in the comments and I'll see you tomorrow.